You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionFit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash VIX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the auction block All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Thursday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. It is time for episode two of your bi-weekly options extravaganza known around the globe as the Option Block. My name, of course, Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com, as well as from the ever-educational network upon which so many of you are mainlining these days. Just did Options Boot Camp yesterday, of course, our premier educational program got a lot of episodes opr hanging out there in the feed maybe some new ones coming your way we get all that sorted out sometime in the near future so look forward to all that fun and then of course for all you folks who want even more in your lives and who can blame you the options insider.com slash pro just got off a great pro q a yesterday with the folks over there actually tuesday so tuesday with the folks over there and interactive brokers fascinating stuff you know the market has changed when uh, thomas petterfee is now going after the basic entry-level options trader. He never wanted anything to do with them. But you can tell there's a lot of them now because all of a sudden even IB says, you know what, maybe we'll go after some of those dollars. Intriguing stuff afoot. If you want to check out all that goodness, of course, options oddities at the end of the week, live access to this, everything else we do. Awesome giveaways like our pro trading crate, theoptionsinsider.com. Slash pro is the place to go to learn all about that fun. As we go around the horn, see who's joining us on the old show today. First, let's go out to the dark and stormy shores of Maine, where we are joined once again by the rockingest of lobsters himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show. How are things on the shores of Maine? Sunny and delightful today. We finally got all that 
Canadian ash humidity we've had has has disappeared. So um, quite happy about that. Do say um, sounding good. The new mic treating you well, sir. I like it. I like it. It is. I'm trying to, uh, you know, we we try to make you happy when we can. <laughs> it's a difficult task. But uh, today you have succeeded, at least for now. We'll see if our next guest can also make me happy. Unfortunately, he's not going to sound as good. He is coming at us from the mobile office. He is traveling around the country to every single location of Skippy's Gyros and Lemonade in the country. So he'll be on the road for quite a bit. He is, of course, Uncle Mike Tusa from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the show. How many locations have you hit so far, sir? Hey, every day's a holiday. Every meal's a feast, especially we can go to Skippy's Euros. Um, but uh, going for the first one today at some point, maybe. Or maybe not. It's a long journey. But the, but the destination is something special. <laughs> that it is indeed. One day, one day I will cash a check from Skippy's for all the free freaking blugs that I have given them. At the very least, a, a case of Euros should be heading my way. <laughs> I plugged that place for years for naught ton of euro so let's go <laughs> all right also joining us today the flow master still hanging out in deepest darkest africa we don't we haven't heard from him i mean maybe our guest has hopefully he's doing all right hopefully he survived the safari you know you don't think of a safari guy and flow master in the same sentence so hopefully things are going well in the meantime though we are joined for the first time in the SIBO hot seat by kevin nichols the senior director of derived market data and analytics over there at SIBO. Kevin, welcome to the Option Block program. And have you heard from the Flowmaster? Do you have proof of life, sir? All right, thanks for having me. Uh, no, honestly, no proof of life as of yet. Uh, I think he is uh, still on safari. I think he's 30 Delta that we never hear from him again. I'm just saying. Henry and African safari, to me, do not go hand in hand. <laughs> no. Well, hopefully he's at least having fun before the lions devour him out there. Well, Kevin, as hard as it is to believe, you've been at Live Vol forever and not at SIBO. We've never had you on the actual, well, we've had you on the interview show. That was a while ago as well. And never on this show, the option block. So let's start there. Tell us a little bit about your background in the option space. And what is the senior director of derived market data and analytics? What do you do every day? Oh, uh, well, thanks a lot. Uh, so I uh, cut my teeth in the business out on the Pacific Exchange uh, back in 1995. So a runner into a floor trader there. Uh, just a, a great experience, one that's it's hard to get these days uh, as we've as we've gone to the electronic marketplace. Uh, but um, came to SIBO uh, through the acquisition of Liveall in 2015 and uh, really um, found a, a, a great home there. And uh, what what we're focused on in the uh, in the RMA team is is really simplifying global market complexities by creating unrivaled, flexible solutions that deliver transparent market intelligence. I really get to dive into data every day uh, and uh, find interesting insights uh, around the markets. Uh, exciting thing for us it has been a push into uh, global markets recently. We'd uh, we've been uh, option centric until. Uh, 2017, when we uh, partnered to go into uh, equities around the the U.S., and then now RMA in particular is going to make a push uh, globally with analytics on uh, markets in Europe and uh, uh, APAC uh, shortly thereafter. All right, a lot of pushes going on, a lot of pushes on the show as well. Right on into our first segment, it is time for the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everyone. Welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading out there. And our producer just chimed in <laughs> our show chat. Good point. I'm owed, at the very least, a signed photo on the wall of Skippy. So, yes, I will look for at least that. I think the cash or the creative euros would be preferable. But, hey. We'll see what we can work up out there as we keep on rolling. Coming on into the Thursday show, you know, it has been mostly all green all day. That's why Uncle Mike can afford to take his road trip around the country right now. He's the permeable, of course. Uh, Today, taking a little bit of a hiatus out there, although it really depends where you're hanging your hat in the markets right now. S&P off almost four-tenths of a percent. The Dow up almost three-quarters of a percent. And the NASDAQ off about one and a half percent. So a very disjointed market to kick things off out there. And of course, if you want to include our friends, the small caps out there, they're off about a full percent right now in IWM. So again, a very, very mixed bag 
depending where you're looking out there. All this kind of mixed weirdness, slightly downside, means we have Vol, and most of our Vol friends pretty much treading water, maybe off slightly. Vix, for example, was at about a 14 right before showtime, at about a 13 and three quarters when we officially kicked off the show. That's still up, but up slightly from where it was this time last week, up about two-tenths of a point. Uh, VVIX at about a 91. That's down about three, so that's slowly eroding. It was pushing triple digits not too long ago, now coming down the other side of that a little bit. VXX, 2390, so that can go back up, and it has, since our last show, up about half a point. UVXY, 17 and a half, so that one can go back up as well, up about six-tenths of a point from the Monday show. SVIX, that one can go down, so Dr. Vix, wherever he is right now, weeping unconsolably out there at uh, 2880 as his SVIX holdings go back down, down about three quarters of a point from the Monday show. UVIX 410, who knows what the hell's going on with this thing, up about two tenths of a point. Maybe someday we'll have a real number to, number to talk about out there again. And VolQ at about an 18 when we kicked off the show, up about a quarter of a point. Uh, we had the VolQ creator, Scott Nations, he was tweeting something interesting right before showtime about how yesterday was yet another day. We had the S&P up and we had most of the Vol products up ever so slightly as well. So it is kind of that weird, rarefied air we're in right now, listeners, where we're kind of uncertain a lot. Hanging out, of course, we have the Fed coming up in the not-so-distant future. And everything seems a little frothy out there right now as we go around the horn. Let's go out now to the old SIBO hot seat. Kevin, for the first time, sir, what is catching your eye out there in the markets this week and indeed today? Well, in, in particular, you mentioned uh, VIX. Uh, it's uh, the interesting thing for me is still uh, kind of trending down. Uh, interestingly, the um, last 37 days, I think it's been trending down. So that's that's pretty impressive to me that even with the pause today, uh, not a lot of fear in the markets. Let me ask you this. In your title, it says derived data. Isn't all market data derived from something at the end of the day? What is underived data? Well, we we probably say raw markets. Uh, so ah, tick raw. Data, that's that would be the that um, would be the stuff. Uh, okay, there raw, we go. And then derived, we've got uh, simplest one would be the balls and Greeks coming off of our uh, streaming analytics, and then uh, diving a little bit deeper, we look at some uh, some uh, aggregated information around uh, open close or uh, short interest, short volume, that sort of stuff. So you don't mess with that raw nonsense. That's for the kiddies. You go straight. To the derived data. I like it. A little clarification here on the show. Absolutely. That was, <laughs> starts with the raw data, and then uh, we build on that. It all goes from there. You start at the raw bar, listeners, the beginning of your meal. Then you move on to the meaty stuff, the steak, the real, the real stuff that brought you to the dance as we go around the horn. Again, he's traveling around the country right now searching, searching for the best Skippy's gyros and lemonade. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, unfortunately, not the permeable day you're used to unless you're putting all your eggs in the Dow basket today. Uh, what's catching your eye out there on the road in this uh, mixed session, sir? Um, so looking at today, it seems like we're just kind of taking a break from just this massive upward bullishness of the last week or two. Um, <clears throat> there's no one freaking out and not freaking out, but there's no freakish earnings surprises to the upside today, uh, or at least as of yet. And um, from there, it uh, just kind of looks like the market's taking a little bit of a breath because it's hard running up a hill if you're a bull. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so just in looking at it, what I think we need to really keep an eye on is that, um, yes, we're in the midst of earnings season, but uh, we also have that Fed thing coming up soon. I hate to mention it on this show, but uh, it's actually coming. I mean, is that kind of making you fearful a little bit, Mark? As you were saying it, I was thinking it's kind of refreshing, and we've talked about it a little bit on Monday. But outside of that, we haven't really talked about the Fed in a while. And you know what? I'm here for it. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to have at least looked past the Fed. That's why earnings season is refreshing, because we can sink our teeth into actual real numbers for a change as opposed to the will they, won't they dance of the Fed. But you're right. Uh, that's going to be coming up on the radar again. It's going to be inescapable. A Fed watch is looming again. Are you done with the Fed? I'm sure a lot of people probably are. I know I am. And I mean, it's like just in looking at that, you have that. And we've been going pretty sideways overall with bonds recently. And so I'm kind of curious to see if the Fed pauses or just raises a quarter point. Um, how are the bonds going to actually react to that? Because at some point, uh, the bonds have a pretty long floor that they've built uh, at this stage with the numbers that they're at and long relative to last year when it was just raise interest rates every every uh, session. 
But um, I'm curious if enough of a base has been built to get a little catch a little bit of a rally in the bond world. And um, aside from that, on uh, the stock market, well, well, that just always goes up. So that's really not that big of news. But uh, that's kind of what I'm seeing right now in the marketplace. All right. And when you let us know if you find even more delicious Skippy's Euros and lemonade outside of the radius of Illinois, or maybe they have some in Ohio. I don't know. Or wherever you're headed to parts unknown, sir. As we keep on going, speaking of parts unknown. Do they get more unknown than the shores of Maine? <laughs> Listen, it's just crazy stuff going on out there. Perpetually drenched in fog, beset on all sides by clam pirates. Just a horrific place to live. Only one guy there, lone atop his tower, scanning the markets day in, day out, while he's also got a shotgun in one hand for the clam pirates. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, what's catching your eye in the hellacious shores of Maine and in the markets today, sir? Well, um, we have a red day. Uh, the queues are actually down for a day. I don't think my monitor even has red on it anymore. I have to turn that back on. I, I didn't need to. You just turned all the red off because it just doesn't go right anymore. Um, I, I see it. I'm seeing that. Um, you know, uh, so Taiwan Semiconductor, they didn't like those earnings. And that's a pretty big chip bellwether. Uh, they didn't like Tesla. Uh, and they didn't like Netflix. Maybe... Again, valuation things. Um, maybe people are like, wow, maybe this stuff's getting expensive. Who knows? Um, so, I mean, this is – and we also had this this Q rebalance, which I'm not quite sure how this is all going to work. Everybody's just going to dump all these stocks and then just buy all the other ones, all like all at once. So if you noticed when they announced this Q rebalance just for – because they're basically trying to knock out some of the top seven stocks. What do they make up? 50% of the market cap in the Q or something. It's a high number, whatever it is. But when I when that announcement came out, and I think it was – it was like a couple weeks ago. Let's see here. Yeah, it was – the announcement came out – I think it was like – Early, it was early July. I'm going to say like the 4th or something like that after the 4th of July holiday. And the queue sold off. And then after that, like maybe it was the 8th or 9th, 10th, something like that. But ever since then, I think the queue is 365. And it went up 20 points <laughs> after that announcement. Um, then, of course, Microsoft announced they're going to raise prices on their AI software. And then that stock was up 20 bucks this week. Um, so there has been quite a, let's just say, uh, a lot of frothy activity where the AI stuff is still, you know, is, is still sort of what I would call reigning supreme. I guess that's the only way to think about it. Um, and... So we'll we'll see how how this all goes down. We've got like a huge bunch of earnings coming up like late into July and early August from big tech. Um so today though VIX is up 6 cents. So Mark actually had a good observation that VIX in the queue was actually positively correlated all week for like the last 5 6 7 trading days. Pretty much ever since this now, Q was going straight up and VIX was basically kind of going, it was going with it. Now that the market has stopped going up, the vol can back off somewhat. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. You didn't get the news? I think Kevin can confirm this. He's on the show now. He's a derived data guy, but they've switched it this week. VIX is now derived from the Qs. Isn't that correct, Kevin? <laughs> I, I, I must have missed that memo. He missed the memo? He's like, because he's like, because I didn't write it. <laughs> <laughs> they got tired, so, you know, they thought the whole S&P thing kind of passe. They wanted to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, so there was – so it was interesting. Let's just call it an observed correlation. Um, so I, I there's, again, funky market dynamics or at least volatility dynamics around stocks going s straight up, you know. Anybody that's stood in indexes uh, for more than they wanted to um, you know, knows that like they're gonna, the liquidity provider is going to drag the at-the-money vol up. When you keep going straight up, because it just won't, they're not going to get a, you know, they're not going to let it get to a certain area. So sometimes you look at realized vol on the screen and it looks very low for, let's say, the last 10 days. But you also got to notice that 
stocks went from, you know, like in the in the queue, you got a 10 day period where they're up 22, 24 points. So you have that, you know, that huge, that huge, I would say, like absolute move, even though the realized vol is slow or low. It's just like four points every day <laughs> or, you know, three points every day just in one direction. So I, it, that does strange things to uh, volatility, or at least the vol stops going down when that happens. Um, at least if I was pricing it, it would stop going down. Um, and I think that's kind of where we find ourselves. However, uh, stocks like JP Morgan are at year highs. So the banking, all the banking stocks, Schwab, stuff like that are all kind of coming, um, coming back. So I, I think there's, I'm just going to say, I still think there is a strong bullish case for the market. I think some of the AI stocks might finally sell off a little bit um, because they're now at this point, they're going to have to deliver pretty fantastic earnings uh, after the run-up they've had this year, 35% or something like that for the Q. So they're going to have to deliver something, I would guess. I'm Again, just a guess because I was wrong last time. I'm like, wow, those earnings don't look good. They look pretty average. They are not even making more money than they did last year. And stocks were up a ton. So um, uh, I'm not going to call myself the best prognosticator when it comes to that stuff. So anyway, I, I think that is that is our situation. But VIX cannot get above 14. And the August future cannot get above 16 as far as I can see. And if, if we can't actually catch a bid there... Um, I just think market goes higher and that's, you know, if you can't, if you can't catch a real bid uh, for the vol futures or any sustained vol bid, then we're probably just going to kind of wind our way higher. So today may be the exception, especially with this, the Q rebalance thing. And I think this could, it could be weird. Um, We'll see. But, uh, but I think interesting times, but overall, even though it's a down day, the Dow is up and, uh, I think there's still reasons to be uh, bullish for the rest of this year. Look at you, rays of optimism from uh, from the cranky one over there on the shores of Maine. Interesting. If even the rock lobster is bullish, then there's no hope for the beers out there at this point, uh, listeners. There is hope for some volume fans out there. We're seeing some numbers out there today, listeners. Uh, VIX already north of 600K, 615,000. This new revised Q's version of the VIX really tearing it up. <laughs> Of course, I'm joking. Before I get emails in, it is not it is not derived now from the queues. Just just to clarify that, six hundred fifteen thousand contracts on the tape right now. The ADV seven forty six, so ticking back in the right direction. We'll see if that can hold. Spy closing in on nearly five million contracts already. Four point eight six million. The ADV seven point three doesn't take much to kick Spy into high gear, and once again, it is revving away. The S one point seven million, so the S looking pretty robust as well. The ADV 2.7 million certainly seems on path to hit that. Small caps, IWM, north of half of their ADV, 505,000 contracts on the tape. The ADV has come in a little bit. It's down to 909 now, so certainly they seem on target to hit that. The Qs, 2.71 million already. So the Qs just on fire. Their ADV is 3 million. They might hit that by the end of the show. So the Qs banging away. You know, the S, or should they, VIX. It puts up a couple of big trades by the end of the show. They could also hit their ADV today. So interesting stuff afoot out there. Let's keep rolling into the single name, see what kind of day we're having out there. Is it a pretty active banger single name day? The answer is yes, listeners. You know, on a day when, when Palantir is kicked to the curb, can't even make the top 10, which these days is a big deal, then you know uh, stuff's afoot. Almost 300K, listeners, just a little bit below that. That's our threshold for a really active day. To break into the top 10. We're pretty close though. 294,000 today. That gets us to the artist formerly known as Facebook. Meta 30666 right now. Off about 9 and a third or nearly 3%. So giving up a little bit of the ghost today. Selling off hard from their high today as well. 315 and about a half. They've sold off quite a bit from the highs earlier in the session out there. So intriguing stuff. And hence why we have so much paper on the tape today. Uh, number nine with 336,000, it is Rivian, up about half a buck today, trading about 25 and a third. You know the deal with Rivian, fascinating stuff afoot out there. We talked about them on this show on Options Oddities. They got as low as looks like about 23.90 this morning, so they have rallied quite a bit from their low, which is interesting. 
On number eight, <laughs> Mr. Rock Lobster. Man, did we miss the boat on this one. Carvana. Weren't we just making fun of this one not too long ago on Options Oddities and it was around three and a half bucks? Doesn't that ring a bell to you, Mr. Rock Lobster? Maybe four bucks? It, it does. Like It was like down there, like, oh, wow, because we were laughing because it was, wasn't like a $300 yeah, spot. Yeah, it was a piece of crap. It got up to $58 recently. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's $46. You know what's funny? They were restructuring debt. Yeah. Jesus, they were. They, we thought they might be going the way of the Dota. We talked about some very optimistic call paper back, I think, earlier in this year. We were kind of laughing about it. Seemed like this one was kind of going the way of the Dodo. Uh, man, they just uh, taken off. Off $9 today, though, so giving a lot of that back. But they're still trading $47, listeners. So a wee bit north of their lows flirting around the four handle the last time we were talking about them. Oh, a little over 11x, closing in on 12x. <laughs> My goodness, this one, it seemed like last time we talked about it on Oddities, they had pretty much been banned from Illinois. It was a disaster, a dumpster fire of a name. And now here we go uh, a few months, a quarter or so later. And man, they have just uh, just exploded up (laughs) 624% in the past six months, Uh, about 40 handles. Given the fact that they're trading about 47, that'll show you how much they've rallied. (laughs) My goodness. Wow. Uh, Number seven, listeners, it's good old softy. They've had an intriguing week as well. You know, is this uh, is this deal with Activision? Is it going to go through? It seems like they cleared more hurdles, but not all of them out there. But still interesting pop. And of course, all they have to do, listeners, all they have to do is whisper the magic words AI. That's all it took to pop them. Literally twenty handles from three forty four to three sixty four on two. That's all it took. It's it's almost too easy at this point for these names to kind of manipulate their stock a little bit. All you got to do is sprinkle the magic pixie dust of AI. Bam. The market gives you 20 points. They have since taken most of it back. We're at about 348 and a half today, off about six and two thirds or so right now. Uh, But still, it's been fascinating to watch. And again, good for nearly 400,000 contracts, 391,000. And the number seven spot on our top 10 today. Number six, Netflix, proving that you can make money in online content. You can also make money if you lock out people who've been sharing your platform for free. That's been a, a huge boon for them. People thought that might be the death knell of them. They shut that down. People are just going to just wash their hands of Netflix. But apparently, they actually like it, and they're continuing to pay for it. Uh, 446,000 contracts on the tape for Netflix, uh, even though net kind of a bit of a, a down day for them, to put it mildly, down about 41 and a quarter handles. They were 481.70 yesterday. There you go. So, again, everyone else taking it on the chin in online streaming. Netflix doing all right. People are worried about the future for them, of course, with the writer's strike and uh, the SAG strike going on out there. So I- intriguing stuff. But yeah, a net sell off, even though some of the early numbers from them were looking pretty good. And again, 446,000 contracts on the tape for them. Number five, it's the Amazonians. The Amazonians, 493,000 contracts. They're off about four bucks, nearly 3% today, trading 131 and a third. Number four, it's one half of our chip zone. They are locked together these days. It's AMD, 591000 off $4.20, 112 and a quarter. You know, it's funny. For all the, the perpetual status that it has in our top 10 movers and shakers here, listeners, AMD. I can't recall the last time someone's written in to ask a question about AMD or tell us they're trading AMD. It seems to be uh, the engine that trades and little engine that could, does a lot of paper, and nobody wants to talk about it. It's very NVIDIA, obviously, all day long. AMD, never, really. Not in recent history, so it's kind of fascinating. Does a lot of numbers nobody seems to want to talk about. Uh, number three, the other half of the chip zone, listeners. It is NVIDIA putting up 868,000 contracts. Good for the number three spot today. Off about 10 and three quarters, actually. About two and a third percent. 460, pretty much even right now. Good for 868,000 contracts. We all know the... Revaluation, revamping, revitalization acts is coming for a lot of these names here in the queues. And then uh, Apple selling off today, so the market has a frowny face. 194 and about a dime, off a little over a buck today. Uh, good for 938,000 contracts today. So Apple putting up some numbers. Let's see, what's the range on Apple today? It looks like it's not even a $3 range. It was the low as uh, 193.88, the high 196 and about a half. So a decent range for Apple, but not explosive, but still good for nearly a million contracts. It's been a while since we've seen Apple threatening that number. You know what the big dog is today. It's the old Tesla. 
Uh, they are coming for it today, off 25 bucks, pretty much exactly. 266.20 is where it's hanging out right now, off about 8.6%. Exactly 3 million contracts on the tape out there. So intriguing stuff. You know, Tesla, day that ends in Y, it's going to be moving 3, 4, 5% anyway. So 8.6%. Not exactly a shocker, but good for 3 million contracts. That's that's a pretty robust day. Uh, speaking of robustness, a lot of names on the docket this week from an earnings perspective. Earlier in the week, we had a lot of additional financials that we didn't get last Friday. So Bank of America, Chucky Schwab, Morgan Stanley, IB, our friends at IB there as well. Uh, they were coming on our pro Q&A during their earnings call. It's kind of funny. Uh, Wednesday, we had uh, Tesla and the old Widowmaker Netflix and United Airlines. Uh, today, we have American Airlines, J&J, Nokia, Abbott, Capital One, and tomorrow, we have American Express and Comerica. Luckily for you, because we like you folks, we have some updated earnings move, earnings move results and earnings season report hot off the presses. So let's see what we've got here right before showtime here. Let's go to... J and J, these are results reports before the bell. 158 and three quarters is where they were trading. They were pricing in 2.2%. They delivered about 4.4%. So a little bit of outperformance. Again, that's where we look. We don't the direction is interesting, but we we're looking net vol performance wise how they're doing. You can pretty much interestingly enough, Netflix pretty much exactly in line with expectations. They're pricing in about 8.7%. And as of the start of the show, they had moved about 8.1%. They probably caught up to about 8.7% now. So Netflix kind of in line, which is interesting. Uh, American Airlines, they're pricing in 4.7%. They delivered 4.3%, so pretty much in line there as well. Uh, Beamer on the 19th after the bell, they're pricing in 3.7%. They delivered 3.2%, so pretty close as well. And then Tesla, actually, in spite of all this movement, they were underperforming. They were down 5.4%. I said they're now down by 8.6%, so they have outperformed now. They were pricing in 7.4%, but it shows you. How much movement you need to outperform some of these ridiculous straddles. Let's go United Airlines after the bell yesterday as well. Uh, they were pricing in 5.5%. They delivered 2.6%. So a little bit of underperformance there. Uh, intriguing stuff. Bunch of names coming up here for the rest of this week. And, of course, next week you can check them out over there on the old website. Let's peek ahead really quickly. Microsoft, 25th after the bell. They're pricing in right now. And again, when we look ahead, we price things in dollars. When we talk about past movement, we price things in percent. I know it can be a little confusing. Uh, Microsoft right now, they're pricing in a little bit, about exactly $18, actually, 1809 In the past, they've moved 13 in about three quarters. So that little bit of extra AI juice sprinkled on top there. Quite a bit of extra juice being priced in there for Microsoft. Uh, we got, let's see, Alphabet. In the past, they moved both versions. <laughs> in the past, they've moved about five and a half or five and three quarters, and they're pricing in about six and three quarters worth of juice right now. So about a buck worth of extra juice in Alphabet and the old Googs. Let's go out to Meta. They're on the 26th after the bell as well. In the past, they've moved 37 and three quarters, and right now they're only pricing in about 27 bucks. So over $10 less juice in Meta, interesting. A lot coming off the top there. Our season, though, looking robust. Again, only 35 names reported right now. 160% listeners. Don't get excited. It's not going to stay there. That's going to come in uh, quite aggressively. As we keep on rolling, listeners, it is time to get weird. It is time to get wild. It is time for the Odd Block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. everybody time to get weird time to get wild time to unleash the eye of sauron and see what it fixes its fiery gaze upon this week and again no flow master this week but uh mr kevin it sounds like you've been scanning while we we're talking here and, and you found some interesting paper in a name i'm not that familiar with how do you pronounce this is that is that nevada is that how you say that sir that's nvidia sir oh that's, oh i'm not familiar with this name must be a smaller name it's an up and cover <laughs> For sure, for sure. You know, uh, I was taking a look at the largest uh, trades of the day in there, and uh, what jumped out was uh, was uh, Jan uh, four, or sorry, Jan twenty fourth, five hundred five fifty call spread. 
trading a little over $15. Looks like, uh, you know, the 500 is trading closer to the ask, 550 is closer to the bid. So it uh, looks like somebody may be coming in to, to buy that 500, 550 call spread. To, uh, to Andrew's point earlier, maybe somebody still looking for that upside, but but thinking that uh, options might be a better better way to go than stock. Uh, so uh, one to watch for sure. There's uh, existing open interest, about 24,000 contracts on that 500 line. And this one looks like it's uh, could be opening on that 550. So something I'll be uh, watching going Interesting. forward. Interesting. They're committed, but not that committed to the cause. They are still on the, selling the five halves after all. <laughs> I don't know. In, invested, but not committed. Yeah, right? exactly. I, I don't know. That long-term upside vertical, we've seen that in a few names. I don't know if that's my favorite play. Mr. Rock Lobster, what are your thoughts on getting a little bit more long-term upside around the 500 strike in NVIDIA all the way out to January? But maybe just in case, you're going to sell a little bit upside as well, sir. Um, <laughs> it's, it's hard to really, you know, I, I look at it and I'm like, okay, it, it's hard to find fault with anything NVIDIA that's upside just because... It yeah. just goes up. Yeah, you might as well sit on your hands with the five halves, baby, because they're uh, going to you know, blow through I, it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and the only thing I would say is, why why bother selling the upside call? You know, like, what, what does it matter? You know, it's just all it does is go up. Uh, in the old days, uh, in the not too far away, like chip stocks, you know, had a multiple um, because it was kind of hard to build new chip plants and make more chips. You know, there was that sort of upper end on the on the run rate to these things, uh, but apparently not for Nvidia. So, I, and I mean, and the vol is so juicy. I don't, I don't think this is. I don't think it's a bad, you know, a bad play. Um, you know, to, to you know, to reduce costs. So I, I don't think it's terrible. A skew's totally flat out there. I think in Jan twenty twenty four. So. It, it, nothing nothing wrong with this if you just are go go long and you don't feel like spending four hundred and fifty nine dollars on Nvidia, you rather just spend fifteen bucks. There you go. A little bit of upside love there for Nvidia. You like that, listeners? A five hundred five half going out to January in Nvidia. You know, all you all have to do is do what Microsoft. Microsoft left the playbook out again. Just whisper AI and bam, there you go. You you're good for at least twenty handles. So these calls could be in the money by the end. Look at Carvana listeners, $4 to 40 plus. <laughs> ah, crazy town. Speaking of crazy town, Mr. Rock Lobster, you know we had to talk about these. In fact, you were messaging me almost instantly after our show on Monday. I think it was around Tuesday. Uh, saying, hey, these are, these are looking good. Of course, on our show on Monday, listeners, uh, we talked about somebody coming in and looked like they were really... They were just going to fade this annihilation of AT&T that was going on out there. Uh, you know, the deal with AT&T had been beat up for quite a bit. And over the last month, it has not looked good. They crushed it from about 16 down to about 13 and a half. That was pretty much their, their low for the year. Things not looking good. There was talk of all this liability and potential lawsuits about lead in their pipes they were laying for their for their fiber optics and stuff. So all sorts of things going on out there. But somebody on Monday decided, you know what, this is just too much. And they weren't even going that far out. They weren't buying, let's say, the Dece or the Jan 15s or anything like that. They were coming in saying, this week, this is going to turn around this week. And they loaded up on the July 14s. The stock was about 13 and three quarters when they started putting these on. They picked up nearly 10,000 for 12 cents. Then they said, you know what? That's not enough. We need another 7,200 more for 12 cents. And they kept going and kept going. Total of 37,000 of these freaking things uh, traded on the day out there, listeners. And wouldn't you know it? <laughs> the stock today, $14.62. So it has rallied uh, nearly a buck over the course. Let's see, how high did it get? Looks like 14, right about here is about the high. Last week it was higher, it was 1480. So they were just betting on a, on a return to the levels it was at last week. And they got it pretty much to this 1460 level. And that was instantly, that was on Wednesday. And they kind of been hanging out pretty much ever since at this level. So these calls are looking good. Obviously, basic math. You buy the 14 strike 
for about a dime, and they're trading about 60 cents now. You're looking pretty good. Uh, weirdly enough, Mr. Rock Lobster, it doesn't seem like they have closed a ton of these. As of this morning, there were still quite a few open on this strike. Let me just see if I could, uh, if I could dig down here. There we go. There's still 21,000 of these open. So they obviously took some of these off. Also worth noting, there was a bit of a, a back and forth. Uh, actually, the total on Monday was 63,000. We had only got half of it on the day. <laughs> uh, looks like they actually came and took off a good chunk of that 53,000 yesterday. They started dumping them. Yeah, 10,000 yesterday for 56 cents. Uh, 10,000 more for 43 cents. So again, they traded even more than we initially saw. So they took off a good chunk of them, Mr. Rock Lobster, but still 21,000 open. Uh, I don't I know you were loving these. Did you ever piggyback on these? Because you were excited about these all week. And, and what are your thoughts on AT&T, of all things, outperforming to the upside, sir? Um, yeah, I thought I looked at this one. I actually put on a little back spread um, in this. After I, I saw this, I go, OK, uh, but. I mean, we don't see this super often where somebody pays like 12 cents for calls. I think they even paid, might have even paid less. And they're trading 60 cents right now for like 50,000 of these. That's pretty good in a couple of days. That's, that's ridiculously. I mean, for AT&T, it's kind of almost the definition of kind of sleepy telecom, right? Not this week, obviously, but. Pick a company that has a longer lasting franchise where the manage, where I would say, I just blame the CEO just listening to too many investment bankers has screwed up every acquisition since every acquisition since they got into cell phones, every single one. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, apparently this is this was already litigation. You know, the environmentalists are banging on the. You know, the telecoms, because there's lead pipes in the ground. You know, I like I don't know what a lead pipe's going to do in the ground, but or lead uh, <laughs> lead line cables or whatever <laughs> in the bottom of the Lake Tahoe. Um, and, there, you know, everybody's freaking out. Um, but I actually bought a little back spread in there. Um, I bought some 16s and sold some 15s, like three to one for like a tiny, 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 like four cent debit. Um so I figured, oh, you know, if this news isn't terrible and like the old tech's coming back, probably trade 16 again. I can get out of the trade. Were they, so, were they weeklies like this or a little bit longer term? No, no, no. I bought the August. Oh, OK. I bought the August. I was going to say. Because I saw fire. it and I was like, because the options were like, the stock was just 16 bucks like um, three weeks ago. So uh, apparently their AT&T and Verizon did not get the message that we're in a bull market <laughs> and that. It's a technology bull market, yet somehow these two telcos, who are supposed to be technology companies, <laughs> are down like 30, for 30 or 40 percent for the year. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's why I did the one by two so if it, if, or the one by three, because uh, of the trade. Like if nothing happens, I don't lose any money. Just it all just goes poofy and I lose like, you know, four cents, 10 times 40 bucks. But if we do get a little move, then I can make some money. So. Um, that is the luxury of that type of trade. So, but yes. I, I saw this, all these, this paper buyers. I'm like, eh, I kind of want to jump on that train. I was a day late probably, but it's all right. I think it'll still work out. Day late, maybe not a dollar short. We shall see. Either way, these popped. Yeah. I, I remember on Monday being a little bit skeptical that they could get this move by the end of the week. It seemed a little, I mean, they weren't paying a lot. So I, it was kind of a cheap swing at, at the bat, but this AT&T going to make all this move. Look at them. They were clearly on the right tip there, listeners. Uh, good stuff. We had a bunch of call Palooza paper on the show on Monday. Let's go back to this one now. This was also from the Monday show. This is EV Go. So this is fun. We don't have to wait long to see the output of these trades we're talking about. Usually, listeners, they're on our books for weeks or months, sometimes almost a year, some of these trades that go out a long way. Uh, these are all paying off this week, which is kind of funny. Uh, EV Go, this was the one that has that uh, DC fast charging network. Really quickly on the year, they went from twelve sixty five to about three and a half bucks. So, not been the best year for them. When we talked about it, the stock was four, almost four forty, and someone was buying five thousand of the July four calls, paying fifty cents. That's right, I remember these now because I remember looking at them at first, thinking, "Wait a minute, did they scoop these? Actually, get them a little bit underwater?" But they didn't. I was just kind of surprised they got them for fifty cents, but the stock was actually a little bit lower, I think, at the time. 
when these went up. So yeah, they paid not much for these. Uh, they paid 50 cents, but the stock was almost 440 at the time. Uh, so pretty much uh, a dime over. And let's see, they came back and did a total of 11,000 of these bad boys on the day. So they were really liking these. These are not looking that good right now. The stock's at four and a quarter, off another 13 cents today. Uh, weirdly enough, this is one of those weird kind of churn and burn ones because weirdly enough, there's only 3,000 of these bad boys uh, open on the strike right now. So it could have been some of that paper we saw during the Monday show. I know Flow Master is always talking about these churn trades. Yeah, total of 11, nearly 12,000 traded on Monday. And then, but the OI only popped about 1,700 contracts. So it could have been a little bit of that. Maybe they were getting the heck out of Dodge. Even that same day, the initial 50 cent kind looks like they dumped some later. Not that long after, 55 cents, 45 cents. Maybe they were giving up the ghost even the same day. Uh, that would explain why the OI didn't really budge. And then looks like there's about 3,000 still open on this strike, which was close to where the OI was at the end of Monday. So could have been a lot of uh, Sturm and Drong signifying nothing, Mr. Rock Lobster. What are your thoughts here on EVGo? Because if they did buy these straight up, and they are still holding 3,000 of them, they ain't looking too good today, sir. What say you? Yeah, this is another one that came up. I was trying to, this is like a, another charging station stock, I think. Of course, EVGo, what a name, yep. right? Um, yeah, I, I, we, we saw this, but I like, I just cannot get behind buying, like, this is the thing. I just, I don't want to buy any calls in an EV chart. Because do you remember when we saw that paper and charge point, like, Somebody just had to trade like 30,000 calls oh, a day. Every, every day there's paper in charge point. I still can't make and sense And you know of what? It. And it went nowhere. Yeah. Like I could not figure out if the guy lost money, made money. Like uh, it was. It's some of the most nonsensical paper I've ever seen has gone up in charge <laughs> And in size, right? <laughs> and then I see Evie go and somebody's buying 5,000 calls that are out of the money or whatever. Like. I can I like good luck is all I can say to that. <laughs> good luck. So to- yes, I'm I'm looking at that and uh it 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 does not it does not warm the cockles of my heart that trade, I have to say. No, nah, it seems like they kind of scratched some that same day and the rest they have on are not going that well. But you know it's always going well, listeners. It's your mail, it's your questions, it's your feedback. So let's get to it. A little bit of the old mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, let's get to it, listeners. Let's get to some of your feedback right now as well, starting with our question of the week. And a lot of this was ripped directly from our Options Oddity show. We've been profiling a lot of crazy trades over there. And a couple just percolated to mind that we were laughing about recently on the show. We couldn't decide which ones we liked the most, which really we meant the least. We really <laughs> so we thought we'd put it up to you folks to decide. Gun to your head. Which of these trades would you rather do? Which would you rather buy? Uh, the Nikola Aug 5 calls for $0.37. Cents. When these went up, the stock was around 2 and a half, maybe a little less. Uh, the Rivian Aug 40 calls for $0.40. Cents. And the stock was around 22 to 25 when these went up as well. Or the Keurig Dr. Pepper October 33s for 55 cents. The stock was around 31, maybe 31 and a half when these went up. Or other, and you could submit uh, your favorite. Mr. Uncle Mike, I know all three of these stocks are huge holdings in your strategic night. Especially Rivian. You guys can't get enough. Uh, do you have a preference of any of these, the Nikola Aug 5s, the Rivian Aug 40s, or the Keurig Dr. Pepper October 33s? And then more importantly, what do you think our audience is preferring, sir? I'm going to go with a double Dr. Pepper. I mean, if Forrest Gump can have 16 of them, what's the, why would I not want to go for that? So uh, I'll go with Dr. Pepper. Uh, I mean, from a tech standpoint with Nikola, I, it's just a, all of the, and all of these are hit or miss. I totally get that. But um, Dr. Pepper seems to be just from what my gut is telling me to be the best pick of the three um, for a lot of reasons. Well, actually, not many reasons because uh, 
I really don't follow any of these three stocks, but uh, let's go with Dr. Pepper. It's definitely the tastiest. I think, I think Dr. Pepper also. I think I think we can all agree it is the tastiest of these three stocks. So I, mean, I don't Nicola Rivian, not that tasty. I lick their bumpers, taste like taste like chrome. Not good. Uh, let's keep on rolling. Let's go out to Kevin. Kevin, sir, which of these would you rather have? And then B, more importantly, which do you think our audience is going for? Oh, for for me, I have to say, um, I like the look of the Rivian trucks. You know, they're that's a it's a nice looking truck. I did see one again in the wild yesterday, so they're starting to get out there more. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, the stock is has been in, in a bullish trend and and up quite a bit, uh, even uh, just over the last seventeen days. So, if the trend is your friend, that might be the trade. Uh, earnings coming up in August, right? Yes, Aug forties. Look at you reaching for the moon there, out there on the Aug four. I like it. I like. It. You think our audience is going that way as well? I would. I would expect that. I, uh, I'm going to say it's going to be one of the one of the one of the uh, two electronic uh, electric uh, vehicles here. Um, you know what? Like I said, I like the look of the truck. <laughs> there you go. He, Uncle Mike chooses based on the flavor he prefers. You choose based on aesthetics. Hey, to each their own. Mister Rock Lobster, sir, you get the final word on this one. What are you voting for, and which do you think our audience is voting for? Actually, we just we closed some curry calls for money today, so I I got to tell you what where we put our money where our mouth is on that one. So, uh, I think I think the audience is going to like uh, uh, Rivian, but I think the Currys are going to pay because I've already seen them pay. So. Yeah, this one seemed kind of obvious to me. I, I didn't. I almost didn't even put the Keurig in there because I thought it would be too obvious that those were. I mean, you're getting all the way to October. You're paying not that much more than the others. The stock only has to move a buck and change, and it has. It's thirty two forty right now, listeners. So these calls are within spitting distance already. So these calls have already paid off. I kind of liked them on the show last week too. Uh, I'm kicking myself. I didn't. I thought that's not. A, that's a lot of time for not much money in Keurig. And, you know, as happens, we're doing the show and then the market closes, Mr. Rock Lobster. And then, you know, things happen and I did not get in on Keurig. And now Keurig trading almost 32 and a half bucks, up nearly a buck. So right now, the winner, winner, chicken dinner, at least from a performance perspective, clearly the Keurig, Dr. Pay, you're not getting those at 55 cents anymore. The winner, though, for our poll right now are the Rivians. They're going with Kevin. They like the look of the trucks, apparently, too. Aug 40s for 40 cents, 54.3% of you choosing that one, followed by 28.3. So we have had a late surge for Keurig Dr. Pepper. Not surprisingly, those calls are actually working out. 28.3% for those, 15.2% only for the Nikola. All it's got to do is double by August expiration. What's so crazy about that? And then bringing up the rare 2.2%. Remember, if you vote for other, you have to tell us what your other trade is. A lot of you voting for other, but not telling us what your other is, so... Uh, get in there with your questions and uh, with your votes, I should say. You got about exactly a day left at Options is the place to go, listeners, to make your voice heard. As we keep on rolling into our final segment, it is time to go Around the Block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on. It's our next episode on Monday. Mr. Uncle Mike, I'm not sure if your Skippy's Zero Hunt will be completed by then. But in the meantime, sir, what are you keeping an eye on in the market until our Monday episode? Well, I think the next level now for the S&P 500, we got 4,600. Where are we going to be in relation to that? Uh, Are we going to keep going and stay extended or where are we going to be with it? And uh, continuing to watch the bonds. The bonds are not moving a ton right now, but uh, I think we're due for a move in one way, shape, or form because there hasn't been one in a while. Uh, That is what I'm watching. I need to watch all the bonds as well. I was more of a Roger Moore guy growing up, but I can see an argument for Sean Connery, definitely. Uh, Maybe a a few of the early bras. Which of the bonds is your favorite, Mr. Uncle Mike? Which ones are you watching? (laughs) I mean, why would I not want to do anything but jumping on the boat with the 10-year note, baby? (laughs) Uh, Definitely watching that. But also watching corporates as well, just to see how they respond to everything. Um, The the near term, uh, the two years, obviously very interesting right now with the higher yields that we have. And... um, Honestly, the I'll watch the 30-year, but at this point, uh, it hasn't really given me much reason to want to invest in it or trade in it. But uh, short terms as well as some corporates. 
There you go. My humor lost uh, on the uncle list of mics. I do hear that a lot, a lot of hardcore Bond fans do say the guy, Lazenby, who did one off in Your Majesty's Secret Service is the closest to uh, the actual Ian Fleming Bond. So be that for what it is out there. Do you agree, disagree? Are you a George Lazenby fan? Listeners, hit us up, let us know. Mr. Kevin, which of the Bonds is your favorite? And what are you keeping an eye on until your next appearance, sir? Uh, we'll, we'll go with the blonde bond. Daniel Craig. Daniel right? Craig. Yeah, his early ones were pretty good. Yeah, that, I think Casino Royale was pretty good. Yes. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go that route. Uh, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to keep following the, the, the tech sector and see if there's um, you know, more trades like I was talking about uh, with NVIDIA. Are they, are they looking to use options instead of stock? Because uh, there's been just such a run up. Uh, so I'll be watching the the macro flow there to see what uh, what the uh, tool of choice is. All right, and last but not least, Mr. Rock Lobster, who's your favorite Bond? You seem like a Timothy Dalton guy to me. And then, what are you keeping an eye on until the Monday show, sir? A Timothy Dalton guy? I don't know. I don't think he was that bad of a Bond. Yeah, um, he was fine. He was I, I, liked his, I liked those movies he was in, though. I didn't think they was. Bad. Yeah, they were a little. They were a little grittier. They're kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, a little gritty. I, I think. I think. Um, I liked his Bond girls, I think. Maybe that was the thing. Um, but Roger, uh, not Roger Moore, Sean Connery, still the best. Sorry, I got Hard to argue with the original, that. yes. Uh, what am I watching? Uh, we, 3,600 again. We, we, we were getting all happy at these levels, then we stopped. So, you know, I, mostly I'm going to see how this Q rebalance goes, if there's anything to it. That's kind of that's the only thing I'm watching for like Monday for Friday Monday. Um, see if there's if, if you know how smoothly these funds can get out of these all these names, the bigger names, and into some other ones. So, um, and that's kind of it until like big tech is happening sort of next week, and we'll see what happens. But I think the sleeper is uh, banks, bank stocks. A uh, lot of cheap options there, and the stocks are moving pretty decently. So um, I, all I'm going to say is I, I think there's a little something there. Uh, you want to talk about cheap calls, the J.P. Morgan August 160s were – the stock's like 154.5 on Tuesday, and they were like 115, those calls. Like So some of those upside vols are getting insanely cheap in a lot of these bank stocks. So – it's not a recommendation. I'm just saying these are things that I observe in my time of observing. You know what? We're cheap, too. We're the AUG 20s in Carvana, let's say, six months ago when we were laughing about it. Uh, <laughs> so now they're 20 plus bucks. <laughs> Good times. Yeah, I think growing up for me in the 80s, even though he's reviled, some of those early Roger Moore films, especially, well, I'm blank on the name now. Uh, you don't, not, you know, I'm blank on the name of the one. They were like G.I. Joe films. He's climbing the mountain, throwing knives at people. I used to love some of those. That kind of got me into Bond at an early age. But, of course, you can't go wrong with the one and only Sean Connery as well. As, as we go around the horn, you can't go wrong with the uncle of Mike's. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, where should folks go if they want to debate your choice in Bond, sir? Yeah, for sure. Check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. Uh, if you're looking for a financial advisor who will talk bonds, bond options, and stock options. Uh, also, follow me on Twitter, at Mike Tussaw, T-O-S-A-W. All right. And Mr. Kevin, sir, if folks want to check out all your derived data or maybe they want to discuss uh, your favorite in the pantheon of Bond actors, where should they go? What should they do, sir? Uh, sure thing. Sure thing. Uh, all of our derived data is available on datashop.cbo.com. Uh, check us out there. Uh, you can also reach me through uh, through Cebo, K Nichols at Cebo.com. Other movie recommendations, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll defer to the rest of the team. And last but not least, Mr. Rock Lobster, sir. Where should folks go if they want to debate with you your choice of uh, Sean Connery? So you like an early Sean Connery or a never say never again Sean Connery? Later. Later. <laughs> I'll, I'll take any Sean Connery. Um, uh, but 888-TRADE-01, uh, 10% off anything at Option Pit if you said you saw the show. Talk to our customer care team or go over to Money Map Press for my weekly profit cycles. And with that. Uh, you all have a nice day. There we go. And a you, nice weekend. For your but, oh, eyes, got out of these tomorrow. I got out of these tomorrow. You're not done yet. For your eyes yeah, only. I, I find I finally remember the name of it. I love that movie. For your eyes only. Height of Bond craziness. Oh, that was a good. That was a that great. Was the a good the one. song was Definitely great. Good one. The movie was great. It was like a GI Joe cartoon brought to life on the screen. I, I defy you to find another Bond movie where they're climbing mountains with crossbows and throwing knives at each other. Great film. 
I love it. So uh, come at me, all you Roger Moore haters, for your eyes only. That's up there. And the apex of Bond films for me, <laughs> listeners, hopefully you're going to come at me for a little bit more content because we got more in store for you in a little bit, listeners. I'll be back for all you pro folks with Carly Garner holding the fort out there on all things futures options with our friends over there at CME in a little bit. Back again tomorrow, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern for volatility views. And then after that, as the Rock Lobster alluded to, what's going to be the next Carvana or in this case, KDP? We were on that KDP train well before anybody else, listeners, and a whole bunch more. What are we going to profile this week on Options Oddities? you got to tune into the show to find out. And the only way to get at that show, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. Then back again on Monday, another episode of The Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index. For in-depth and relevant information, SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com. Com slash VIX today to learn more. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 